Hello there and welcome back. This video is going to be regarding how to do some realistic blending within Adobe Flash CS5. I should mention anything you see here should work with other Flash versions. I'm just going to be using CS5, an older version at this point. You are just going to have to find your way around a bit with the newer versions because they may have changed the layout. Now what I'm going to be doing is blending this smiley face here with my with this background I've chosen. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is, is make a new project, make a new layer, call it background. I've already done that. Then we want to drag drag the chosen image, the one you want to blend the other image into, your background. Here's my background, quite a large image. I'm going to resize it to the size of my display box, the white square you see there. Okay, now, we, now that we have that set up, the next thing we're going to want to do is make a new layer to put our smiley face in. Clicking on the smiley face over here, dragging it in. The image I have is a PNG image. It has transparency just to make it more realistic. Next thing you want to do is convert it into a symbol, a movie clip. And now that it's a movie clip, what we're going to be doing next is going into the properties panel Going down to this button right here, we have some presets and then we have a list of possible effects. If we were to click this, we have drop shadow, blur, glow, and so on. Now what we want to do first is select bevel. We want to add some bevel to this. Now I'm just going to reposition this sort of in the center, maybe off to the right. Now we're going to be decreasing the blur just to see where our fine lines are, where the bevel is going to be taking place. What we would do commonly is de increase the distance of it, so as you can see it's having this kind of effect. And then we want to adjust the angle towards the source of the light, which is about right here I would say, for my image. Now we have to increase the blurring. We could always also adjust the quality of it. I'm going to choose high quality just to have a more realistic effect. Decreasing the blur a bit just to make it look a bit nice. Notice that the bottom here is a bit too dark. What we're going to be doing is adjusting the shadow of our bevel to a more lighter color. We can choose maybe this one right here. That looks a lot better. Now we will be adjusting the bevel in the future, but for now let's just change the color of our smiley face. We're going to go here and add a, an adjust color filter. Let's, let's decrease the contrast on it. Try to make it look a bit more blended and decrease the saturation of it because most things in the real world do not have too much saturation. Also I should note that the order of effect towards a smiley face depends on the order at which you would you would add them. Therefore the first thing that's going to be added to our smiley face is the bevel. Then the bevel is going to be changing colors as well with the movie clip itself. That's why we're having a bit of a darker a darker blur, a darker bevel rather. Now what we're going to want to do is click on the adjust color and bring it just above the beveling. And as you can see that gives a much more real realistic effect. Now the next thing we can do is decrease the brightness on this just to make it more like an eclipse effect. Maybe adjust the angle on our bevel, have it over here, play with the blur a bit, make it, it looks a bit nice like this I would say. Decrease the contrast. There we go. Now the next thing we want to do is add a shadow to this. Again we're going to be going here, clicking on drop shadow. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is adjust the distance we have for our shadow. As you can see we notice the shadow moving backward. What we're going to be doing is extending it to its maximum distance, 255. Then we want to adjust the angle to make it a bit more accurate towards the light source right here. Now decrease the opacity, they call it strength. I'd say this looks about right. Maybe you want to increase the blurring of it. We can also adjust the quality again. I'm going to be doing high quality, increasing the strength. And at this point, it's all just a qualitative analysis. It's just what you would think looks good for your image. The more complicated your image, the better it's going to look. I'm just using a smiley face here just to demonstrate the power of using filters within Adobe Flash. Now I'd say this looks pretty good, but we're going to be doing one last thing just to add a sort of final touch. I'm going to insert one new layer, go to my library, and I found here a image, a lighting image. I found this by doing my, well, doing a, a sort of search using my favorite search engine. I just typed in lighting effects, PNG. Notice that it has a gradient toward the center. The center is more bright. I'm going to be using this gradient image because it produces a much better result. Now once you have this, you want to right click it, convert it into a symbol. We're going to be calling this our lighting. Now the next thing we want to do is resize it towards the stage size, the size of our other images. That would be roughly around here. Now we are going to go into the properties panel for this movie clip that we just made. We're going to be editing the blending right here. Notice it's on normal right now. We have a variety of options we can choose. Let's go through them one by one just to determine their effect. Clicking on layer and using the keyboard down key, we can scan through them like this. Here's the blending of darken, multiply, lighten, screen, and so forth. And this is just a race. Now I particularly like the multiply effect. As you can see, it gives a much more realistic image. That looks very nice. 
Now, as I said before, if you have a very complicated image, like a person, let's say, or maybe a very detailed graphic image, like some sort of illustration, it would look far greater than just some simple smiley face. And this is the finished product. We can actually do a sort of test run, just to give you an idea. This works very well for animations. All right, so this was just a simple video showing you how to use filters in Adobe Flash. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want more content like this. And I hope you're having a nice day.